Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL R2, which is an extension of trigonometric ratios, specifically with cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So just like with the last video with sine, cosine, and tangent, I brought up a diagram that kind of explains what exactly uh, you do for these ratios. And the only thing you really need to know is that the three ratios we are doing today secant, cosecant, and cotangent are directly related to sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, whereas cosecant is going to be hypotenuse over opposite. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, whereas secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, whereas cotangent is going to be adjacent over opposite, okay? Um, the way I kind of think about that is uh, with the alphabet, S is related to C, C is related to S, and then, of course, the tangents are related. Just a little personal blurb there. Okay, so we have our first problem here. And these problems are the exact same as the stuff we faced in R1, except now with different ratios. So this one is find the uh, cotangent of angle P, which is right here. Okay, now we'll do uh, tangent in SOCA-TOA. Tangent equals TOA, so opposite over adjacent. Okay, but we're not looking for tangent, we're looking for cotangent, which is just the inverse, so cotangent equals adjacent over the opposite. Okay, so I'll cross that out for theatrics. And so uh, we want to know what the adjacent side is over the uh, opposite side. So the adjacent side is going to be the side that is not the hypotenuse but connected to P. So this is the hypotenuse. We'll leave that alone. So if we're doing P, the adjacent side is going to be the side that is connected. So 5. And then, of course, over the opposite side of P. So if we go to the opposite, that's going to be 12. So cotangent is just... 5 over 12. 5 over 12. Okay, so now we have cosecant. And so sine is related to cosecant. So we have SOCATOA, so sine of x equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse meaning cosecant is going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite side. Okay, so it's asking us for cosecant of y. So we go to y over here. And so first we want the hypotenuse of the entire triangle, which is going to be 17, right? Because it's the opposite side of the right angle. So 17 over the opposite. So the opposite of y is going to be... Dun, 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 dun. 15. So 17 over 15. So 17 over 15 is going to be your answer. We do not have to simplify that at all because 17 is prime. Okay. Another cosecant. I'm going to skip that one. Remember, oh, here's secant. Found one. Okay. So now we're going to do a secant one. Okay. So remember, secant is related with cosine. So cosine of x is going to equal, so ka toa, so a h, so we have adjacent over the hypotenuse, okay, meaning the secant, secant of x is going to equal hypotenuse over the adjacent. So the hypotenuse of the triangle Again, the opposite side of the right angle is going to be 2 square roots of 14 all over the adjacent, and the adjacent for t is going to be square root of 14, right? It's not going to be the hypotenuse. It's going to be the other one, so square root of 14. Okay, so to simplify that down, we can divide both square roots of 14 out, so we're just left with 2. Go back here and then do two. Great. 
Okay, I'm going to jump to 86. Okay. Um, so just like with the last set of IXLs, you're going to see problems like this where they are not going to give you one of the sides of the triangle. And so before you find your cotangent of angle W, um, you might want to find the other side here. Remember, cotangent is going to be the adjacent over the opposite. Okay, so if we're doing W, we have the adjacent, but we don't have the opposite. That's what we need. So uh, how we find missing sides of any right triangle, we use the Pythagorean theorem, right? So A, B, C, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, so let's do that. We have a squared, we don't know what a is, so we're gonna plug that in, plus b squared is three square roots of five all squared equals c squared. c is two square roots of 15 all squared. Okay, now let's factor it out. Uh, three squared is nine times, the square root of five squared is just five, then equals, 2 squared is 4, and then the square root of 15 squared is just 15. Cancels out. All right. So 9 times 5 is 45, and 4 times 15 is 60. Now to get a squared by itself, we'll subtract 15 from both sides, or sorry, 45 from both sides. And we are left with 15. And we don't want a squared, we just want plain ol' a. And so that is going to mean we have to square root both sides, meaning a is going to equal the square root of 15. And can we factor down 15 anymore um, under the square root? We cannot. 15 is 3 times 5, uh, which are prime numbers. You cannot break those down any further. So we're going to leave it as uh, the square root of 15, so that is going to be a. Perfect. Okay, remember, that is not our answer. We just needed to find A, so we could find the adjacent over the opposite. So the adjacent of W was three square roots of five, and then put that over the opposite. So the opposite of W is now, as we found, square root of 15. Okay, and can we break these down any further? Well, you could. You could do three square roots of five over, you can break the square root of 15 down into three times five, and then separate those out. So it's three square roots of five over the square root of three times the square root of five, kind of like that, which means you can take out the square root of fives. So all you are left with is three over the square root of three. And typically you do not want the um, square root of three on the bottom like that. So you gotta multiply both sides, the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator by square root of three. Okay, and that way uh, they cancel out. So we're left with three square root of three over three. Cross those out. So we are just gonna be left with square root of three. Okay, so we're gonna come back. We're going to do square root of three, and that is gonna be correct. Okay, so once you get to 90, they just ask you to do multiple at the same time, no big deal, and that is it. So I'm gonna end the video here. Take care and study hard, and I will see you for the next IXL tutorial video. Goodbye.